from the other side. Oh, you can invite guests on here? I didn't know that. Hi, guys. Oh, look, I can put it. I can put filters on this. But you know what? We're going to be real up in here. Hey, Gil. We're going to be real up in her. So I, I have on my, my new house, my new home. This is my shell. I was talking about if you were watching my uh, stories this weekend. I bought this sweater. I don't even know what day. Thursday, maybe. <laughs> it's not a sweater. It's like it's like an outdoor jacket. It's like very thick outerwear. But I have not taken it off pretty much since. Hi, Susan. Is that Sonia? Sonia? Sonia like Tanya? Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Kelly. I see you too, girl. I see you too. Oh, Kelly, you just sent a request to be on my, in my live video. <laughs> you trying to come on and say hi to everybody? <laughs> Nico, hello. I can't remember your name, love, but yes, hi. Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, this is like, I put this on and I was like, I'm never taking this off. It's like wearing a blanket and it just, it satisfies all of my cancerian energy in my chart. Yes, my, tele my teddy bear is my teddy bear shell. <laughs> so it's like my cancer shell. And it's like literally, it's it's like the color of a crab. So although it's it's hot though, if I wear it, like it does get hot. So it is. It's my comfort jacket. Like my comfort jacket. Like blanket. Okay, so we are, it is 11-11. We are going to move into this Um towards the end of this reading it will be 11 11 on 11 11 eastern time my time it will be 11 11 not for all of you last night i got a reading i didn't get a reading i watched a reading from one of the girls that i watch who's in australia and it was really cool because she's like it's 11 11 right now on 11 11 and i was like that's crazy it's 11 10 right now you know it's like the day before so it was cool to kind of be in that energy of the 1111. So I've got the sacred feminine. For some reason, I felt like pulling from these cards. Uh, the sacred feminine, and I've got the queen of the moon oracle. That's what I'm, I'm going to be reading these for the full moon reading. And then I'm going to do a reading for the week, which I'm thinking of pulling from the cosmos. I don't know why these, these decks, this one in particular has a lot of heavy energy. I don't know why I felt like pulling from there and I'm not as familiar. It's like all of the, uh, goddesses and I'm not that familiar with all of the goddesses, but the day that I bought these, I literally, I went to my favorite park that I go to and I Googled every single goddess on every single card, but I mean, I didn't remember them all. 78 cards in here so I don't think I think they are all goddesses yeah but they all represent myths and such and there actually is one interestingly enough there's one two cards in here that are switched like the numbers are wrong so it's the justice and the strength card the numbers are wrong on the card because the strength card is like it's like the goddess of, I don't know, she's represented by the bear. And then the justice card is represented by, I can't even remember who represents her in this particular deck, but she's holding scales. But it's, the, according to the number on the card up here, it says that it's the strength card. It says that it's switched. So I think it's a little interesting that strength and justice are, are that's like, a, that's a printing error. But I feel like that's on purpose. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a weird, interesting little thing. So just so you guys know, um, this, this video will be up 
here on Instagram for 24 hours, but I do upload it onto Facebook. So if you are not able to watch through the whole thing, you can either come back here later or you can head over to my Facebook um, and watch the entire thing. If you want to be able to skip through on Instagram, you just hit the right hand side of my face. So I guess for you, would it be over here? I don't know. But, um, and then it kind of skips over. Had a very deep astrological reading yesterday. What came from that will help with what's happening today. Okay, so I'm just going to tune in for a second because I have a lot of my own personal stuff coming up, which I know is going to be connected to the collective but I also want to get out of my own way and I don't want my stuff to muff up your stuff. But again, I know that I am an example. I am sort of really representative of what everybody's going through. So I'm just going to ground myself. Feel free to ground yourself with me. I'm just going to connect with my root chakra and draw a cord down to the center of the earth. that our guides of the highest intention and love for us come through and guide us during this full moon and this 11 level portal. Show us with love the messages that we are here to receive and help us to hear them. allow any of my own ego issues that don't pertain to those that are watching here to just be gently moved out of the way and put in a very safe place so that I can honor them later for myself on my own time and just really be here and be a clear channel for source energy. that Heather? Hi. How are you? Okay. So I'm just going to cleanse this deck as well. This deck still has the energy of the fucking place I bought it from, which is weird. Okay. That's probably why I don't use this deck as much. I think it needs to be cleaned in a different way. It's okay. The goddesses are telling me we need to clean it. Yeah. Okay. So then I just ask all of the goddesses from this deck to come through and bring this deck into the present moment and infuse it with your energy. Hmm. It's interesting. It's almost as if the people who made this deck didn't do that. Do you ever like, you ever read a book or bought a, a deck of cards like this? And yes, it is. I'm feeling a little bit out of balance today, but otherwise, okay. Interesting. You use the words out of balance when we're at the 1111 portal, which is about really balancing the two selves, the two parts of ourselves, masculine and feminine. It's also about twin flame healing, which is what I'm experiencing right now. Uh, lots of twin flame healing. Ooh, wah, 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 wah. Um, I got a twin flame reading yesterday from the same girl I was just talking about. Who she's, She is a twin flame guide. And, um, you know, you don't, it's like, you don't believe in twin flames or that whole thing or you don't know if it's really real unless, until you find, until you get into a relationship where the only thing that explains that relationship is the twin flame journey. It's like you you don't even know what a twin flame journey is until you're actually fucking in that shit. And a lot of us can be in twin flame journeys, but actually I think it's more, you got to be on a spiritual path to even call it a twin flame journey. Otherwise it's just a fucking abusive relationship, <laughs> but it brings up a lot, you know, the, in the twin flame journey, 
Your twin, your twin is an exact mirror for you. It's not like some people you meet and they, they kind of mirror certain aspects of you. Whereas the twin mirrors every aspect of you. That's the difference between the twin flame and just any other relationship. And I guess like a, this girl calls them soul flame relationships. I guess that would be like a soulmate relationship where they more mirror your soul your higher vibrational aspect of yourself, it's a little bit easier to be in those relationships because it's it's mirroring your des- your highest vibrational desires. Whereas the twin flame, it's like, for me, I just wrote down a list of all the ways I'm not loving myself, I'm judging myself and all that. It is like three pages long. And I'm sure for other people, it'll probably be even a lot longer, you know? And it was just is kind of a shock to me, but I'm like... These are all the ways that he was able to hurt me or all the ways that I already judged myself. So he was merely just reflecting them, um, those fears about myself, but he also reflected the love too. So it was like high, 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 high vibe connection and low, 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 low vibe connection. So that's the twin flame is like, you get the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows because it really is like your highest vibe self and your lowest vibe self. It's crazy. I think I'm experiencing that shit right now. Yeah, interesting. I call them flame flow, flower. I can't even say that. Flame thrower relationships. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of debate around the twin flame thing and all that kind of stuff. And and I get it because you're like, I don't know, like, am I in a twin flame relationship? Am I not? Da, da, da. And depending on where you are from your perception in the moment. Like if you're in a low vibration space, you might not believe that. But when you get into a high vibration sp- space, you're like, oh my God, yes, this is this is a twin flame relationship or whatever. Like you see it. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you do. And then it, it, it feels very similar to like the empath thing for me and also the witch thing for me. Like I didn't become an empath. I didn't become a witch. I didn't manifest purposely a twin flame relationship. I was in grave pain what being an empath didn't know why I was in grave pain and then realized what it meant to be an empath and then was like oh my god this describes this is the only thing I can think that actually describes what I'm actually experiencing so the same was the twin flame thing the same with the witch thing I was like this is the only the only sensible explanation and trust me I'm a skeptic like I'm a natural skeptic so I mean, I'll be in something for years and years and years before I can say the answer to this is the woo-woo answer. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's how I am. I'm like, no, no, no. We got to find every other reason that this this could possibly be. And there's a lot of, like, denying, no, this can't be true. But especially with the twin flame thing. But now I'm like, no, yeah, he's definitely a twin flame. It's just I have the choice. I don't have to be with him. You know what I mean? But he's he's always going to be my twin. He's always going to be reflecting where I'm at right now on every level. Okay. Hi, Lynn. New here. Found you on YouTube. Awesome. I think for quite some time I will be working on my own divine union. Exactly. So that's the purpose of the twin flame relationship anyway. It is often an empath narcissist relationship. Yes, that was us as well. But also in a twin flame relationship, you can, you when you're an empath that isn't fully healed, you haven't come into your own, uh, balanced your own self. Like you haven't become that 1111. That's the 1111. So the twin flame is you are two whole people coming together. That's the purpose of the twin flame relationship is you mirror all that needs to be healed within yourself. Everything that I hated about him are things that I judge within myself. So when you experience, you t- we can tend to experience that person as the narcissist and bring out the narcissist in them as well, but also experience them as the narcissist when we have still have stuff to heal, right? So like you don't, you don't experience narcissistic abuse if you've healed the parts of you that can no longer be abused by the narcissist because they use your insecurities against you. That's what they do, you know? And so when you heal your own insecurities, that doesn't justify their actions or anything like that, but it's like, okay, you can, you can go the low vibrational way and you can blame them and you can feel the pain and all that, or you can finally learn to rise above it. And you know, 
it's a difficult process, but it really is like, like I said, I just wrote down this whole list of how I've not been loving myself. And it's like, let's start there. <laughs> let's find all the ways that I've not been loving myself. And then I realized, wow, these are all the things that he used to hurt me in. Like I judge myself for being such a messy person and like not keeping my house clean. I really judge myself. And he used to like really abuse me for that. And it's just, I was only able to do that because I felt such shame for it. They are same gifts used for op opposite intentions. Yeah. And it's, it's also understanding what is opposites. Opposites are really two things cut from the same fabric. So it's really about self-integration. Today is about self-integration. Today is about self-integration. And what I really feel when I close my eyes and I see 1111, I see that it is an opening, like the people are, they call it a portal. It is like opening the door to a new life. Hmm. I hear what you're saying, but I think with more healing, more truths about those twin flame union will come out. That will make it more than apparent if it's twin flame relationship or no. Polarity. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I don't believe you have to be with your twin flame. I don't believe that at all. I mean, this is for me personally, this is somebody who's going to be in, he's been in my life for a very long time. I've known, we've known each other since we were teenagers and he's going to be in my life for the rest of my life. So yeah, I don't think that we belong together, but he definitely is a twin in this, in that sense where he has reflected everything about me. He's been everything. Um, my new year's resolution is to be able to shuffle my cards like that. <laughs> I used to play, uh, I used to play cards like, uh, 13, I used to play 13, that's an Asian game, and uh, I, I just played cards when I was young, so I know how to shuffle that, I'm a good, I'm a good dealer. Okay, so here's the thing, heavy and light, heavy and light, that's what the goddesses have to say to us, heavy and light, these are, I mean, we're working with dark goddesses here. And we're working with the lighter goddesses. Like, uh, for instance, Persephone, she rules in both worlds, right? Depending on where you are. Everybody's laughing, laughing at me. Shuffle goals. Yes. Um, okay. So they're showing me to do a, a read like, like 11s. I don't know what these reads are going to be. Okay. So... It's going to be you matching you. It's parts of you mirroring yourself. Okay, what are the three cards going to mean then? Okay. Okay. So these are going to be telling a story, one aspect of yourself and the other aspect of yourself. Oh! We just pulled that card. The strength justice card. <laughs> That's funny that I was talking about that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We got some of my favorite people up in her. I think this one's Bridget. <laughs> We've got Ace of Swords. We've got the Three of Pentacles. And we've got the Nine of Swords, which is Medusa. That's a hustle card shuffle. You know it, Gil. I used to... <laughs> I used to play 13. So, you know, I grew up with a lot of, like, Asian, like, gangsters, right? That's my first baby daddy was, like, an Asian gangster. And uh, so we've also got the Four of... Uh, swords being mirrored by the ace of swords 
Interesting. That seems like a higher vibrational self. We've got the nine of pentacles. Beautiful. I think that this is Bridget. St. Bridget. I gotta, I gotta look it up. But when I was like, we would, I would play 13 with my best friend. It's an Asian game. It's kind of like a, is there a drinking game called like Kings or I think they call it asshole. I don't even know. Sweet. The Leo card in house. Um, but yeah, this is definitely Bridget cause this is her cross. Okay. Um, but like we would be playing and she would be, I was such a hustler. <laughs> We'd be playing and she would be beating me and she had like kind of an ego. So it was easy to like, you know, she'd be like, all right, let's, let's start betting money. We would bet a dollar a game. And I would leave with all her money. <laughs> but I really, like, a lot of times I just didn't do it on purpose. It was just as soon as you put money in, I'm really playing. That's how it was for me. It wasn't like I was trying to hustle her. But, and I used to play pool and I would hustle people too. I used to go, this is so bad. When I was 15, I think my mom's on here. When I was 15, my mom used to take me to the bar. And I would hustle, like, all these, like, old dudes. Because I was 15. I'm like, this girl, I, this girl can't play pool. I'm like. No, I can't play pool. Mm -mm. It's called Kings, right? But some people call it asshole. But yes, Kings is like, it's like 13. 13 is, is a, I think it's Chinese. But all the Asian people I know play it. Okay. okay. Yes, this is Bridget. Protectress of nature and springs has hung her cape on sun rays, security in life, psychological balance. And certain results. Love that. How did I get these two switched? Isn't that interesting? See, now this one. I even thought about, like, contacting these people and being like, you know your cards. Or <laughs> Kangs. <laughs> As it's known in Chicago. That's funny. Okay. See... Athena is the justice card. This is the justice number. See, it's, it's, but it's not. It's actually, is it Artio? The Celtic goddess of the hunt, whose name means bear. Physical strength and energy converge, granting the equilibrium necessary to face adversities. Okay. So it's just a weird way that they told me to balance these. So this is like a way to balance your energies, I suppose. Okay. So the first one is the four of swords and, or the four of swords and the ace of swords. So the four of swords is about meditation, rest, rejuvenation. What I'm really seeing is surrendering, surrendering your thoughts over to like if you see th this is three witches over this man who's it's almost like he's decided to allow himself to surrender over to higher magical powers higher magical beings um these are like our ancestral witches and it's it's almost kind of like there's something that is out of your hands right so if you are going through this I can't, I'm trying to love myself for this, or I can't accept this part of myself, or I'm trying to find balance, or yada, yada, yada. It's like, you've got to bring it up to source. And I also like, do you see how she's cutting this cord? And this is, what is this called? Some form of an ax. It's really like, it's funny too, because I, I heard this on um, the Leo King today, which is funny. This always kind of happens that, my readings are connected with astrology as well, but um, there are some things that you can't cut the cords on. There's some things that you can't disconnect from, that you can't heal on your own. And it's going to take you just leaving it up to source, but you've got to surrender that. interesting so the other thing is the three of pentacles which is all about projects and support like getting people people coming together and getting help 
people coming together and creating something together. But you got that with the nine of pentacles, which really is about individual abundance. So it's really just letting you know that everything that's going to guide you today for this full moon and everything that you do for this full moon, like any kind of, just so you know, tomorrow morning around eight, I think it's around eight thirty my time, Eastern time. Those are three. What is that word? Fates. Um, but just know that it's, it, the theme of today is very much like if you want the outside world to look good, the way to make the outside world look good is to focus on the inside. If you want to get help and assistance, fates, is that what you're trying to say? Those are three fates. If you want help and assistance on the outside, you have to figure out how can I support myself? It really is going to be like healing on an individual level in order to affect that change outside of yourself, it's almost like whatever you think you need, you kind of need the opposite. It is that polarity. It is very much as above, so below. So if there's something within yourself that, or something that you want to manifest, maybe it's a, re a certain type of relationship, maybe it's a job, maybe whatever it may be, it's how can you create that within yourself if you want assistance from source energy, if you want them to heal something, you have to surrender it, right? So the work that you have to do is within yourself. Yes, as within, so without, exactly. And then as it pertains to these two cards mirroring itself, mirroring themselves, this is the nine of swords, which is typically like distraught, depression kind of a thing. But because it is um, Medusa, she means something very, uh, she's very meaningful to me. She is one of the first, I call her a goddess. She's not technically a goddess, but I call her a goddess because she's been a goddess in my life. She's more, she's a protectress more. Um, but the, one of the, she is one of the first goddesses, myth, mythical creatures that have ever come to me when I started on my journey of witchcraft. And... What she did was I had all these fears. I had all these fears of being like abused and yada, yada, yada. I had to, this is where the strength comes in. I had to have the strength to face them in order to bring them up, to see them, to look at them and go, okay, what is the fear within me? What are all of these painful things? And what Medusa did was she came through and her snakes in my vision, her snakes started eating all of my fears and also started eating and just devouring all of the abusive energy that I felt was coming towards me. I feel like that's something that needs to be done on an internal level for you guys. Bringing Medusa in and asking her to protect you from your own fears and to devour your own fears. There's really a great deal of like, Giving it to God, one of the one of the strongest women I've ever met. Love you, Darren. Oh, hi. Who who is that? I don't know your name from your. Uh... Any advice on how to face your fears? Yes, do it with God. What they're telling me right now is they're not fears when you face them with me. Oh, it's Dom. Hi. How are you? Um, you got a funny name on Instagram. <laughs> um, but when you don't face your fears alone, face them with God. Face them with, I just feel like you're so surrounded by so many goddesses. Because this is moon energy, you are surrounded by a lot of divine feminine energy. And let me just tell you something, guys, if you've never worked with dark goddesses and you, and maybe you aren't a, a woman and you haven't faced that, the dark goddesses within yourself and really illuminated and loved 
and saw the, I mean, the, the fucking power that the energy of these dark goddesses have, they reflect the power within you. But that's what is, they're just so fucking fierce because... They're just, okay, something just hit me. I don't know why it just hit me personally, but the reason the dark goddesses are so powerful is because they are the ones that truly love unconditionally. They are the ones that truly know how to love all things, all beings, all aspects of themselves. They know how to love the dark because they know they are light. They are the holest beings of all of the myths. Right? <laughs> so I just wanted to pull three more cards and then I'm gonna pull for the for the week. We've got faith. This is sort of like how to bring these two together, right? A mother's love is fierce. Faith, and look at that. This is a mother. I'm gonna read from the book on this one. We've got darkness. Of course we did. So having faith in the darkness, having faith in the fears, having faith that you are guided. This is what the dark goddesses are here to show you is that when the dark goddesses are, a lot of them are like in the underworld. To be in the underworld is to be in your illusions. It's to be in all of your fears. Death isn't real. So the fact there really is no underworld, right? There is, but there isn't. The underworld is, is in your own consciousness, right? Or lack thereof. But being in darkness is being in unconscious energy. And you have to ride. These dark goddesses, their faith is strong. They ride sometimes solely on faith alone. But it's gone beyond faith to them it's gone to a an aspect where they have so much faith in their own light that they that they understand the darkness that they can not just transform the darkness but absolutely love it know its purpose be in it and know that they are light that's that's where the faith comes in and so it's like that's what they're trying to tell you you want to, if you want to really be a whole, there's 11 people on right now. If you want to really be a whole and complete person, all of you beautiful 11, 11, 11, 11 people. It's easy to love yourself in the light, but when you're in the dark, you have to have faith. That's how we become balanced. You have gratitude when you're in the light. You feel good. You you totally like ride that wave, you know, like don't shame yourself because you're just in the light, not experiencing the dark. You don't shame yourself, but also don't shame yourself in the dark because that's an illusion. Understand that the dark is an illusion, that the dark is just merely an aspect of that same pole. That law of polarity is merely that these are cut from the same fabric, right? Dark is merely the absence of light. Dark is just less light. It's not the opposite of light. It's just less, it's a lesser degree of light. So there's never no light. There's never no light. There can't really be absence of light because the polarity would be just a lesser degree of light. It's just like if you cut an atom in half and you cut it in half, you can never get to a point where there's not an atom. You just get to the point where there's less and less and less and less and less and less and less. Do you see what I'm saying? So know that. Understand it. It's it's actually like scientifically impossible to have an absence of anything. Isn't that interesting? That the darkness is merely a lesser degree of the light. It's just a lesser degree of what you once were able to see. And it's almost like what they're, the goddesses are showing me is like, you got to put a microscope. You have to learn how to see on a microscopic level. You have to learn how to see the specks of light that are still around. That is where your faith grows. You've got to be able to see the specks of light. It's just like when the light is blaring in your face, you almost have to like adjust your goggles to have less light come in. 
And it's like, it's like the, it's like a, the lens or the aperture on your camera, right? When you're in a high light, you have to kind of turn that shit down. So you don't see as much of that light. You're not allowing as much light in because it's too much light. But when you're in the darkness, you got to turn that shit up. So you're allowing more light in. So it really is, and they're telling me, like, the camera lens is such a perfect analogy because it is your perception. It is the lens of, through which you're choosing to see through that changes what you see. They're like, we love the dark because we've adjusted to that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we've adjusted to that, and all it's just a matter of adjusting to it. It's not actually the darkness. It really isn't. It's, it's just our perception. It's, it's, we're seeing, we're perceiving it as dark because we haven't adjusted our lenses to the light that is here. And they're saying like, when you do that, you're going to see so much beauty here. There is, this is a land that is so beautiful. It's like, it's almost like going underwater and realizing that there's this entire land. You can go, if you go underwater without the right equipment, you can't even open your eyes to see what's under there. But if you go with the, with the correct, you know, goggles and, and filtration system to be able to see properly. And, you know, you go with your, oxygen tank that's like coming in with your light coming in knowing that you are light that's your oxygen tank you're not only not going to die underwater which could would any other in any other circumstance without the right equipment would kill you but you're going to be able to see the great beauty of an entirely new world and that's what they're saying like don't demonize the darkness it's merely another perception of this world it's another aspect of this world it's a whole new dimension but it's within it's not even it's like is a whole new dimension but it's not it's like in this one dimension it is 11 11 in this one dimension there is this aspect and this aspect and you get to play in both of them you just have to learn how to adjust your lens a lot just came through on that one Light only comes out of darkness. Darkness is just concealed light. Bring light into the darkness through having faith. Beautifully said, it's just a perception. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then we also got the unexpected, which I, I mean, I'm really feeling like this to me feels like two aspects of you. It's almost like your innocence leaning on your strength, right? Like it's kind of like the feminine leaning on the masculine aspect of you. Of course, this will... Um, this will physically manifest probably throughout the week, but, but I think that you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Just like when I talked about looking underneath the, the ocean and seeing the beautiful world that's there when you have the proper equipment, when you're really set up all beautiful card. Yeah. Um, I love that this one's, this one is tattooed. This one's like the badass one. Right? This one's like, I've been through it. I'm strong. I got this. I now have a tattoo to represent. You know, tattoos in in ancient tribal, not even ancient, but still tribal times, tattoos were really representative of a spiritual, coming out of a spiritual journey of being whole and complete, of coming out with strength. And it's like, there's still always going to be these aspects of you, not always in every, in every, um, not always, not always going to be aspects of you, but there still are currently aspects of you that are here that need a shoulder to cry on, that need somebody to lean on, that need to know, like, this, the energy that this one has is kind of like, I'm safe. It's just like, you know, as a, as a, a woman, if I lean on, like, my man, I'm just like, mm, I'm safe. I love you. I appreciate you. I appreciate having this rock to lean on, you know, and this is, but this is within yourself. Right. These are the these are the twin use, you know. OK. To do that also means to let go of preconceived notions of what darkness is. Absolutely. Absolutely. The beauty of darkness is to. Release. All that you are. I'm, I'm reading this goddess book right now. And they were telling the story of Inanna, goddess Inanna. She goes to see her sister. I can't even pronounce her name. She goes to see her sister, who's the ruler of the underworld. I think Inanna is Sumerian. She's like one of the first dark goddesses. Anyway, she has all these divine powers that she wears in these jewelry. She wears all this like uh, lapis jewelry. 
And she has to strip down all parts of herself in order to get into the underworld. And it's very um, symbolic of us. If you want to actually be able to see, see in the darkness, you do have to release all of those layers. You have to release, you know, Inanna had to release her divine powers. You have to release the powers that you think you have in the light. The power of being in control of your life. It's, it's such a, it seems like such a conundrum because it's like in the light, there's one aspect of yourself is divinely in deep power. You can do whatever you want. You can, you can change the whole world. You can change everything that you see. You can literally manifest the life that you want. And then there's another aspect of you that needs to completely surrender, that has no control of anything and has to be okay with that. And this is where the balance comes in. When you're feeling, when you're in the darkness, you, it's almost like you've got to know when the switch goes off. You got to know when you're doing this and when you're here, you got to release everything and be in faith and your duty is to release. That's this energy. And when you're here, your duty is to create, set your will, focus more, set your intention, bring forth, take control of your life. But you can't do that in the dark and you also can't do the opposite. When it's time for you to take control of your life, you can't give up. So when you master the darkness, it's much easier to master the light and really to be whole and complete, period. Okay. I'm pretty sure I got everything because I do want to do the week. So 43, I just opened to this one, the unexpected. No matter how well you plan, there's always room for the unexpected to occur. Build your resistance as rare occurrences can happen. A visitor you have not seen in a long time may re-enter, especially with Mercury retrograde and the full moon. In older farmer's almanac, a blue moon was described as the third full moon in a season that has four full moons. The newer and now... The newer and now more accepted description is that a blue moon is when there are two full moons in one calendar month. Either way, it is a rare occurrence. The energy and power of the blue moon can be best taken advantage of by setting intentions on these moons of things that you really want but have never felt could happen. I refer to big wishes, the, the almost miracle stuff we would both we would be both delighted and surprised about if manifested. See, what I'm sensing is not to set your intentions for trying to bring something into the physical. What I'm, the only intention should be stripping yourself down. Ask Medusa to help you with that. Thank you for the reading. It felt good to listen to on the way to work. You're very welcome, Heather. Um, she will give you strength. Do not do it alone. Know that you are divinely guided. Know that you are divinely supported. But it really is about release. It really is about letting go. Um, and you will find, you, you will see the unexpected. What you thought was fearful, it will feel much like going under the ocean and yeah, you're terrified. Like maybe you're terrified. Oh my God, am I going to see sharks? Am I, what am I going to see? I'm so scared. This is something I've never done before. I, you know, what if my heat, what if my, I almost said helium tank. What if my oxygen tank doesn't work? You know, what if I die? You know, all those fears. But then when you get down there and you do it, you're just like, it's, it's like you entered a new dimension and that's what it's going to feel like for you guys. But you gotta go. You got to go into it. The way to go into it is to release, is to let go. Let go, let go, let go. Surrender, surrender, surrender. That's what you should be doing all goddamn day, probably for the next two days at least. Just surrender, surrender, surrender. Um, just know that when you are in a place of resistance, your only job is to surrender, surrender, surrender. 
surrender, surrender, surrender. And you will, it will be glorious. You will sing a song of hallelujah, you know? I think even listening to that song um, would be good. That is a song of being stripped away. Hallelujah. Listen to the lyrics of Hallelujah. What, how's that one go? I heard the David play in the Lord. You never care for music, do you? Listen to that song. It is about, it's got the same kind of energy as these dark goddesses. Like, it's got this energy of stripping, stripping you down to your core. I love that song. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's a couple different versions of it. I keep seeing this Taurus. It's a Taurus full moon. So now I'm going to do the week. It's almost 11-11 here. I feel exciting, nervous energy. I see a wave crashing into your life. This is for the next week now. I'm going to do a reading. Makes me cry every time. Yeah. Um, I see a wave crashing over your life. For some reason, there's a lot of water energy. I don't know why. But I see a wave crashing over your life. In a good way. And the best thing for you to do is just let go. Don't try to fight against the crashing waves. Don't try to fight against the water. It's like you've got this wave of like really good things happening to you and really not for you things moving out of your life all at once. It's like you're moving around in a washing machine. And you're going to come out different. But... Some of you could feel so much resistance that you're really trying to control things and you're holding on to, to too many things. You got to be okay with, it's not like the death of the ego, you know, because that's not even possible, but it is the death of a lot of old belief systems this week. It is certainly the death of a lot of old belief systems and it's one of these things where it's like the only thing you could do is like hold your nose and let the water just take you where it may or just completely let go. It's almost like, it's almost like they're saying like, just completely let go. Like even just like breathe underwater. Even though everything in you says, I can't breathe underwater. For some reason, they're saying, like, you got to let go in that way. It's like jumping off a cliff. And trusting that the wind will carry you. Big leaps of faith this week, guys. Big fucking leaps of faith. And what you're doing when you jump off that cliff is you're saying... I'm releasing all of my fears. I'm releasing all of my preconceived notions about what this is going to be. I'm releasing all of my doubts. I'm just, just all at once. Boom. And you just let that wave churn you and you're just like under the water and being flipped all sorts of ways and allow it because if you, if you force it, it's going to hurt. But if you allow it, you're going to dance through it. You know, last night I was super nervous during a deep meditation. I had to come out of it. Couldn't let go. Yeah. This is where Medusa is going to help you because if there's these like debilitating fears where you're just like, Nope, I don't have faith. You're going to want to bring faith in and she can help you with, um, those fears. Don't do it alone. That's what they're saying. Like we're here. Don't do it alone. That would just be stupid. That would be a, a huge egoic clerical ever, error. Okay. Okay. So with this week, we've got six of water, defeat, loss, disdain, and humility. So you're going to feel like you lost something. 
this is six of water is the past. So it's going to be good for you, but you're not going to know it's good for you. Like you're going to lose something from your past. It's going to be an idea. You're going to lose an idea about who you were in your past. You're going to lose a part of your identity from the past, but it's not a bad thing. Like you might feel defeated. You might feel a sense of loss, but it's not a bad thing. So we've also, this is the king of fire. Just look at this. Just look at it. He's got a, he's wrapped up in a snake and he's shedding skin. He's shedding this old skin. And look at, this is one thing I never noticed. Notice the skin that he's coming out of is darker than the skin that's the, the new skin. So it's like he's breaking his light. And it's good. We've got this lightning bolt. It's like he's breaking out of the darkness with his light. just dropped a bunch of cards and this says the relationship between knowledge and ethics again this is about identity but I'm sensing more like this is about losing the identity from your past there's like so many cards falling off of the deck falling off of the thing um I don't even know why but in this card it feels more like shedding the identity of your adult self. What are the parts of you that say, I have to be this way. This is what it means to be this way. We put it in reverse. So you may be holding on too much to who you are as an adult. And for some reason it is connected to who you were as a child, because you think who I was as a child, that's it's like you judge that part. Of yourself and so it's almost 11 11 it might be 11 11 right now let me see it's 11 08 so you judge that part of yourself and because you judge this younger part of yourself you became you developed this like avatar in your in your adult aspect like who you are right now in order to try to not be that younger part of yourself is almost like you were like, that person can't be loved. So I need to be. So for instance, like me writing down all the judgments about myself, I was like, oh my God, I've always known I was a perfectionist, but I thought that I had healed a great deal of my perfectionism. And I'm like, no, still there in, in some aspects, I've healed a great deal of it in a lot of aspects, but I'm like, wow, I am still judging myself for not being perfect. And the reason I want to try to be perfect, or I'm trying to be good enough. I'm trying to be you know, seen in the world as, you know, my art is beautiful. My art, you know, whatever I create is beautiful. I am professional. I am, it's almost like I'm trying to create this persona to, so as to avoid the false illusion of myself that says two more minutes until 11, 11, the false perception of myself from my past that says I wasn't good enough. So they're both false perceptions, but it's like you created this persona, you created this mask in order to cover up a real illusion that it's like the way you see yourself, which isn't how the source within you sees you. None of it is fucking true. It's like, it's such, it's such a crazy thing. It's like, um, it's like, you know, how doctors continually like, uh, give you, they treat symptoms. It's like, you continue to creep, create, uh, you ch continue to treat a symptom when it's like the, the, the core of who you are and who you were in your, past in you know as a child in your youth the fact that you're like you're looking at who you were from a false premise like you have a completely false idea of who you were and now you're trying to mend the idea of who you think you were and the only way to do that is to heal who you thought you were is to let that none of that's true about yourself guys none of it is freaking true so the other card that we got is the three of air, which would be the three of swords. We put it in reverse. This is the Hercules card. Great effort and trial. Let me see what it means when it's in reverse. I don't know. For some reason, I feel called to read in here. So reverse the tales of someone's Herculean, Herculean 
efforts might turn out to be just a lot of flexing, flexing and posturing. Yeah, a person may be flaunting a showy resume in place of having the actual skills for the job. Wow, isn't that, that's like some fake ass, like, y'all, we have some masks on this week. We have some masks on this week. Um, a final test may be all that is needed to see if they are what they claim to be. What that says to me too is like, what's wrong with not being, what's wrong with not having the skills? We do lie. We do lie on our resume. We lie when we're dating somebody. We try to say, try to put on this front like we are something that we're not. And it's not because there's nothing wrong with not being that. That's where we need, that's where the, that's where the healing needs to be done is to say, it's not that you don't have the qualities. Mm -hmm. It's that you think that there's something wrong with you because you don't have these qualities. There's nothing wrong with not knowing everything. There's nothing wrong with, you know, like me being messy. Like I've got to stop judging that. And like, there's something in me that says, I'm not good enough. I'm not a perfect person. So I have to pretend like I'm person. I'm just going to cover up the fact. I'm going to hide the fact that I am messy or I'm going to maybe make a joke about it and act like it doesn't actually hurt me as much as it does, or I don't actually feel as insecure about it as I actually do. And it's like, this week is about taking those masks off. Here's the thing about the twin flame, the 1111, the mirror, when life is mirroring, when everything is mirroring you, it's mirroring your truth. I recall judging my ex very often because he didn't learn how to cover up the things that I learned how to cover up. And I was like, how dare you not, how dare you show this part of you that is unlovable and not cover it up? Like I'm good at covering it up, you know? Of course, I didn't say that outright. I didn't realize that that's what I was saying, but I was saying that in a lot of ways. We just passed 1111. Have faith in this time of new rebirth. You must go through death in order to have the new life that's here for you. You're saying everything I need to hear. It's really touching my heart. Good. It was an illusion about your identity, true identity emerging from underneath the surface. Yeah, so this, and that has a lot to do with the full moon as well. So... The two cards that fell down, there's a whole bunch, but these ones fell sitting up in this, and then I'm going to have to go. We've got the Queen of Cups and am Ambush Fear with Your Ferocious Dream. This fell out of the, the Sacred Creator's Oracle deck that I just had sitting next to me. And this is about a, long, a lifelong commitment to yourself, to who you truly are. When you release the waves that are crashing around you, they are releasing this mask. Please know if you could take anything from this, we think we're not enough. Huge lie. Exactly. Please know that the two things that you can take from this is a don't do this alone. This is, this is some heavy shit. And these dark goddesses are fucking equipped. Okay more than you could ever know. So accept the help, accept the help. I have like one more minute, okay. Accept the help and then also, you know, surrender into this. Allow the old version of you to be stripped away. And even more importantly, this isn't about removing the mask from you and uncovering the insecurity. This is about realizing that that insecurity is based on a fucking lie. Go down to the core. What did you tell yourself about yourself when you were a child? What did you tell yourself that was a lie that said you were unlovable? It's all a fucking lie. And so allow Medusa to help you to uncover the lies, but know that they're lies. It's not like, oh my God, I'm going to take off the mask so everybody's going to see this terrible part of me that's so unlovable. That's painful to do it that way. But when you say, you know what? 
I'm going to go down to the core and I'm going to address the lie that I told about myself that said that I wasn't worthy. And I'm going to look at it as a lie and allow God source 28 seconds remaining, allow source to tell me the truth about myself. And then the mask will just melt off of me. How do you ask her? How do I, how do you ask who Medusa? You can just call on Medusa. You can get a picture of Medusa. You just ask her. For me, I've just had Medusa come up. Okay, nine seconds and they are kicking me off of here. Um, I love you all very much. Have faith.